So, let us now uh, look at uh, the numerical methods of solving uh, differential equations. Uh, this is mainly an iterative method by which we solve uh, uh, a differential equation, um, could be uh, ordinary differential equation or partial differential equation. Uh, and uh, these iterative methods uh, can be a one step method uh, or a multi step method. Let me explain what they mean. Um, so, so, this is numerical uh, solution of uh, So, as I said that uh, y as a function of x is um, solved iteratively um, starting from a given condition. Um, and uh, mainly two approaches are used. So, this is uh, A is that uh, one step method So, what happens is that uh, one uses um, the information from only one preceding point. So, every uh, time it is iterated, uh, you need only the uh, solution that you have obtained at the previous point and all other earlier solution can be discarded. So, this is called as a one step method and uh, similarly a multi step method one uses the information Um, from uh, two or more uh, steps to estimate y of x. Okay, uh, so we uh, would you know look at a few um, methods of sol uh, solving these differential equations by this iterative procedure. And uh, the main uh, methods are uh, one, uh, let us call it a Taylor series method, two, what is uh, called as the Euler method, a very closely linked one to the Euler is called as the Hune's method. Let us write Euler's method, Hune's method and four, uh, the most commonly used and the most important one is called as the Runge Kutta method. Okay. So, we will uh, see them uh, one by one, uh, but uh, before that let us uh, at least establish the formalism that lead to the approximate solutions of these differential equations. So, let us start with the Taylor series method. Okay. So, uh, what we do in Taylor series is that uh, we uh, expand a function, uh, let us call it f of x or y of x uh, about a point x 0 in this particular fashion. So, it is x minus x 0 and then y prime at x 0 plus 
x minus x 0 square by 2 factorial which is nothing but 2, it is a y double prime evaluated at x 0 and so on and then uh, it is x minus x 0 whole to the power n by n factorial. Uh, I am writing it in this particular fashion, this uh, n uh, inside the bracket and uh, uh, as a superscript it uh, denotes that that is a nth derivative of y with respect to x um, and so on. So, uh, so, why we write down this? We write down this because we need to solve uh, the differential equation, we keep writing it as DE as an abbreviation, it is y prime equal to f x y. So, you need to solve this equation and uh, the solution would appear as y, uh, y as a function of x and uh, we claim that a Taylor series solution uh, would represent a, a valid solution to this differential equation. Let us see uh, how. Uh, so, uh, we basically need to evaluate higher order derivatives uh, y prime, y double prime, y triple prime and so on. So, uh, we must repeatedly differentiate uh, f of x y uh, with respect to x. So, w r t is with respect to and uh, keep evaluating them at x equal to x 0. Okay. So, this is the whole idea. So, uh, this is little cumbersome process no doubt about it because you have to evaluate all higher order derivatives and uh, let us see how we do that. So, for example, um, you have a y prime equal to f of x y. Uh, so, a y double prime is nothing but a d d x uh, so, this means a d 2 y d x 2 which means a d d x of d y d x which is a d d x of uh, uh, so this is that and since d y d x is nothing but f x y. So, we will write a d d x of f x y. So, let us write it with a uh, square bracket here all right. Um, so, this is uh, nothing but equal to a del del x because it is a, a f is a function of both x and y while you are uh, uh, taking a derivative with respect to x only. So, it is a del del x of uh, f of x y uh, plus a del del y of f of x y and a dy dx uh, rather del y del x or dy dx is fine because y is a function of x. Okay. So, uh, this can be written as uh, a del f del x. Now, I explicitly not writing uh, the functions f as a function of x and y, but I mean the same thing. Uh, so, this first term is del f del x. The second term is uh, f because this is nothing but f. So, it is a f um, del f del y that is the second term and uh, this can be uh, farther uh, written as f x plus f f y all right uh, where the subscript x denotes that it is a derivative taken with respect to x. So, my y double prime is this. So, the second derivative is nothing but this quantity. Okay. And uh, similarly, a third derivative can be found by taking one more uh, derivative with respect to x. So, this is f x x which is a del 2 f del x 2 uh, and then there is a, a f uh, rather a 2 f uh, f x y that is a mixed derivative. So, that del f del x uh, and del f del y. Um, and then there is a f square 
you need to work this out carefully. Uh, this is a del 2 f del y 2, uh, then there is a f x f y. So, this del f del x and del f del y, these two are multiplied and then f um, f y square. So, this is a del f del y um, and, uh, <coughs> uh, and taken a square of that. So, uh, these are the higher derivatives which can hence put into this, uh, let us call this as equation 1 and then y as a function of x could be calculated. Uh, let us take an example of this. Um, and uh, let us have this y prime equal to x square plus y square and this is what you have to solve. Okay? And uh, the initial condition is that the y uh, at x equal to 0, it is equal to 1 and this is written as y 0 equal to 1. Okay? So, that is the initial condition being given. Uh, so, since uh, our y prime is given, a uh, y double prime is equal to 2 x plus 2 y y prime and uh, <coughs> because uh, uh, at y uh, at x equal to 0, y equal to 1. So, uh, y uh, so, what is uh, y prime? Uh, so, this is uh, this gives uh, okay. So, uh, <coughs> a y prime uh, which is equal to x square plus y square since y at x equal to 0 equal to 1, y prime at x equal to 0 will not write x equal to 0, but will simply denote it by uh, 0 in the bracket that is equal to 1 as well. So, y prime 0 equal to 1. Now, y double prime 0, this is equal to because we have to in the Taylor series, if you uh, remember that we have to evaluate these derivatives at a given point, which is at the initial point, the point that is specified in the problem. Here, the specified point is at x equal to 0. Okay? And uh, this is equal to y double uh, y prime equal to uh, uh, this is fine, and then y double prime equal to zero is nothing but uh, you put x equal to zero and y equal to one, and y prime equal to one, you get a two. Okay, uh, y triple prime, uh, which is nothing but a two plus a two y y double prime plus a two y double prime square. So, a y triple prime evaluated at x equal to 0 is nothing but, uh, um, so this 2 and then y is equal to 1, y double prime is 2. So, it is 2 plus 2 into 1 into 2, uh, this is at 0 and then uh, plus 2y prime uh, square. So, that is equal to uh, 2 again. So, this gives a 8. Okay. So, uh, the Taylor series uh, solution uh, for the differential equation is uh, y at x is y at x 0 plus I am just writing the general solution once more. Uh, y prime evaluated at x 0, x minus x 0 whole square by 2 factorial y double prime evaluated at x 0 plus uh, x minus x 0 cube um, 3, uh, 3 factorial and y triple prime x 0 and of course, all these other terms which uh, we have not calculated as yet. So, we will keep this solution up to this. And this is nothing but this is equal to because y at uh, so x 0 is 0 okay? and y at x 0 is already given which is equal to 1, uh, x 0 is of course 0. So, this is x and y prime at x 0, y prime at 0 is 1. So, it is x plus it is x square uh, y double prime at x 0 is nothing but 2. So, uh, this, this 2 will cancel with the 2 factorial. So, this is 1 plus x square and then it is a 4 third x cube and so on. Okay? That is the solution of this uh, equation, that is the solution of these. So, this is y as a function of 
x. So, this is the solution. So, a Taylor series solution. And of course, you understand that there will be error because we are truncating the series uh, after the third um, um, derivative or the third term rather the fourth term if you include uh, y uh, the, the point about which it is expanded and um, this will introduce error and these errors are uh, you know can has to be uh, these errors have to be calculated and uh, let us discuss a little on the error. Uh, error in Taylor series method. Well, I when I write in uh, you know in a continuous fashion all these things uh, they um, this looks like n. So, uh, should not confuse it is a series that I wanted to write. Okay. So, this is the thing that we have to calculate and uh, of course, uh, this um, the error will of course, go as if we stop after nth term here we have of course, stopped after the third term. If we um, stop after the nth term the error is going to go as x minus x 0 whole to the power n plus 1. Okay. And uh, if uh, x minus x 0 uh, becomes or it is a mod of that rather. That is the difference between where you want the solution, uh, I mean to numerically compute and the point x 0. Suppose you want x to be far off from the origin that is x equal to 0, then of course, this term will become large. So, if it becomes large, uh, then of course, the uh, error also becomes large. This of course, restricts the utility of the method and uh, <coughs> so the utility says that if in the interval a to b in the interval a b when b minus a is large the method is inadequate. So, the question is uh, what to do about that. Okay. Uh, it is very clear that the method is uh, inadequate because of this uh, fact that suppose you want to calculate uh, at x equal to 10 whereas, uh, x 0 is 0 okay. and then uh, you know this as you miss powers of uh, these x minus x 0. So, uh, the leading order power that you would be missing is x minus x 0 whole to the power n plus 1. And then of course, this becomes uh, you know uh, the method becomes inadequate and uh, one has to have a remedy or at least have an idea that how much it is accurate and so on. Let us talk about the remedy. Uh, so, the accuracy can be improved uh, if we increase Um, the number of sub intervals in the whole in, in the whole interval a b. Okay. So, do not take the entire interval at one go rather this um, interval from a to b you divide into sub intervals uh, several sub intervals so that you go from a to x 1 x 1 to x 2 x and so on. So, uh, so let us divide into uh, a x 0 x 0 x 1 and x 1 x 2 and then go and do it between say x n and b and that way uh, and apply this uh, Taylor series 
in each of these sub intervals um, or rather these uh, small uh, smaller intervals that we have. So, compute y x i successively using Taylor series expansion. Okay. So, uh, this you uh, do it and uh, so basically uh, here y at x i is used as the initial condition for finding y x i plus 1. Okay. So, let us write it x i plus 1 uh, equal to y x i plus y prime evaluated at x i x i plus 1 minus x i. So, you take equal um, intervals of equal width uh, is what is meant here uh, and uh, y. So, this is y prime. So, this is y double prime um, at x i by 2 factorial and x i plus 2 minus x i um, sorry x i plus 1 or 2 uh, x i whole square and so on. So, here x i plus 1 minus x i equal to h, um, where h is the width of the interval. Okay. And uh, so, basically uh, this will go all the way up to uh, y to the power m x y that is a mth derivative and m factorial x i plus 1 minus x i whole to the power m. And uh, so, this will be written as uh, this we write it little uh, shorthand notation as y uh, i plus 1 which is nothing but equal to uh, y evaluated at x i plus 1. Uh, it depends on the value at uh, so, this will write it as y i, y evaluated at i and plus h y i prime uh, plus uh, h square by 2 factorial y i double prime and so on and then go all the way it is h to the power m by m factorial y i to the mth derivative of that. So, this is um, now this uh, y i plus 1 which is evaluated for the first interval say for example, uh, this is used as the initial condition. or y i plus 2. I hope this is clear that uh, you uh, divide the entire interval into uh, various sub intervals and apply the Taylor series expansion each one of those uh, sub intervals and use um, the initial value uh, for the next sub interval as the one that you have obtained uh, from the first sub intervals the result obtained in the first sub interval. So, now again you write down y i plus 2. Uh, which is equal to y i plus 1 plus h y i prime i plus 1 plus uh, h square sorry this is not h cross this is only the uh, so it is h square by 2 factorial y i plus 1 double prime and so on and then you have a h m to the power m factorial y i plus 1 m and so on. Okay. So, 
Uh, this way what happens is that uh, your uh, <coughs> the sub interval size when it becomes too small uh, then uh, and you actually uh, iterate the solution over this sub intervals and uh, then you get a, a much better result for the solution of the differential equation. So, let us take uh, an example we cannot uh, uh, sit and do it for a large number of intervals, but at least two intervals we can show. Take an example. Okay. So, the same example y prime equal to x square plus y square. Now, take y at 0 equal to 0 and uh, for the interval is uh, 0 uh, and 0 0.4 uh, using two equal sub intervals. Of um, well, there is not uh, there is no sub intervals. Um, uh, each of width, each of width, zero point two. Okay. So, uh, let us do it. So, we have this interval 0 to 0 0.4 and uh, we want to break this interval into two equal intervals. So, 0 to 0 0.2 and 0 to uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 and use the Taylor series expansion and see that uh, what we get. Okay. So, uh, this is iteration 1. Uh, so, y 1 equal to y 0 plus h y 0 prime plus h square by 2 factorial y 0 double prime and so on uh, h cube by 3 factorial y 0 triple prime and so on. So, uh, you can calculate this and put x equal to 0 and remember that y at x equal to 0 is equal to 0. So, if you do that, uh, then what you get is that uh, 0 0.002667 uh, at x equal to 0. So, this is remember that this is the solution at x equal to 0. So, this is your y 1 uh, <coughs> uh, sorry not x equal to 0, but it is 0 0.2. So, that is the solution at 0 0.2. Use this solution for the next interval from 0.2 to 0.4. Okay. So, now so, this is uh, well I should not say iteration, but I should write that uh, maybe it is iteration because I have divided into two intervals. Uh, so, this is now um, iteration 2. So, now x 1 equal to 0 0.2 and y 1 equal to 0 0.002667. Okay. So, now recalculate y 1 prime at x equal to 0 0.2 uh, y uh, 1 double prime at x equal to 0 0.2 y 1 triple prime at x equal to 0 0.2 and so on. Okay. Because you have this uh, you can do it analytically. So, one can do it and uh, what one gets is the following for y 2 uh, use uh, these to get y 2 equal to y 1 plus h y 1 prime plus h square by 2 factorial y 1 double prime plus h cube by 3 factorial y 1 triple prime and so on. Okay. So, this if we truncate up to this it becomes 0 2 1 3 5 2 and uh, if you use one interval Uh, between this, 
uh, what one gets is that uh, y at 0 0.4 equal to 0 0.021333. So, uh, the using two intervals you get the result uh, different in the fourth decimal place um, and uh, you know you can improve the accuracy if you choose a smaller one. Uh, let me give you as a home assignment choose h equal to 0 0.1 where you have to do it four times, but you see that how accurate that becomes and also do it uh, uh, you know exactly by using analytic methods, the methods that you are aware of in your from your mathematical physics or mathematics course, uh, you can do it and, um, and get the exact result and compare with this. So, one uh, you know major deficiency or we can write it here. So, let us make a box of this. So, one major deficiency is the um, evaluation of the higher order derivatives. And you must have gotten a feeling that uh, not only uh, they have to be computed uh, by hand, uh, you could also compute using the methods of derivatives that you are aware of, but uh, numerically, but those numerical methods or even the analytic methods of computing higher order derivative, especially for uh, complicated functions f of x, y, it is complicated because you are taking a derivative with respect to x, whereas uh, this could be a function of several variables uh, x, y, z and so on. I mean here we are simply talking about x and y. So, uh, these evaluation of the derivatives are this thing. So, the, the expressions for uh, these derivatives may have to be to be computed analytically. That is what I mean is that you may actually need to have them first on pen and paper and then you code it there. Uh, and as we have already said that uh, numerically evaluating derivatives is always a risky procedure and is prone to a lot of errors because of the fact that one uh, usually divides it with a small number uh, that h being small, the method has uh, you know has its own uh, deficiency. So, let us now talk about Euler method. Okay. So, this is uh, about the Taylor series method, it is not very useful, but very innovative. You simply write down the Taylor series expansion, evaluate all the derivatives and calculate you know uh, the, the derivatives at uh, the initial point that is given and that will uh, do the job. So, Euler's method is the simplest one step method okay? and uh, of course, uh, it has also limitations, but we study it for the reason that uh, it is the first method that or rather it is a method that is used in all the you know higher order methods or more uh, efficient methods. So, it is important for us to learn this Euler method and uh, we say that is um, simplest one step method. Has limited applications. These are the disclaimers, but uh, yet we need to learn it. And what it does is that it uses uh, Euler Euler's method 
uses the first two terms of the Taylor series expansion. All right. So, uh, what it does is the following that it tells that the solution is of this form where x 0 is the, um, the initial point and the slope or the derivative calculated there and then it is a x minus x 0. Okay. So, uh, consider this d to be solved uh, y prime x equal to f x y with the initial condition as y at x 0 is nothing but y 0. So, y y prime at x 0 is nothing but f x 0 y 0 correct. So, this is the because the solution the equation is y prime equal to uh, f. So, uh, y prime at x 0 is nothing but f at x 0 and y 0. So, uh, y of x is nothing but y at x 0 plus x minus x 0 f of x 0 y 0. We simply put in place of, so let us call this now as equation 1 and um, so we put it in 1. All right. So, this is your um, equation that uh, the, the or rather this is the solution that you get. So, uh, this is, uh, so the value of um, y at x at x equal to x 1, uh, say specifically you are required to find the value uh, of y at some x equal to x 1. So, y at x 1 is y at x 0 plus uh, x 1 minus x 0 f of x 0 y 0. Okay. Uh, if you take this uh, value to be um, different from x 0, if x 1 is different from x 0 by an amount h, we get y at x 1 is simply equal to y at x 0 plus h f of x 0 y 0. Okay. Simple enough uh, and uh, quite intuitive, but of course, has its limitations as we will see. Uh, so, let us write this as um, uh, y 1 Uh, equal to um, y 0 plus h f um, uh, x naught y naught. This allows us to write for the next interval uh, y 2 equal to y 1 plus h f x 1 y 1 and this further allows us to write y 3 equal to y 2 plus h x 2 y 2. So, just by knowing for a given interval, just by knowing the solution at um, a subsequent point, uh, one can, uh, I mean uh, just by knowing the, uh, the solution at the preceding point, one can know the solution at the subsequent point by taking just the first two terms of the uh, expression of this uh, Taylor series expansion. So, we can write this as, um, so Euler's method um, states that a new value, what we mean by new value is a new value of the solution is equal to old value of the solution that is y, y is a function of x 
plus slope that is uh, your f which is the value of the function with y prime equal to f and then the step size that one uses. Okay? So, one can iterate this over uh, the intervals or rather by um, by uh, breaking down or splitting down the interval into several sub intervals and can do that uh, <coughs> every time using this formula get a new value of the root of this equation or rather the solution of this differential equation. Let us uh, see graphically what it means. Say the solution is like this. Okay. So, this is y as a function of x and this is x and say this is my x 0 that is the, the starting point or the initial condition that is given. Okay. So, this value is of course, is x 0 y 0 that is the value of the function okay. and what I am supposed to do is that I am supposed to draw a slope here okay, and go to a point x 1 which is at a distance h apart and get the solution here. So, this solution uh, is, so this point is understood by this method as x 1 y 1, okay, but actual is this value x 1 y 1. Okay. So, this is my x 1 y 1 actual, but this is the uh, by this Euler's method that is the x 1 y 1 that one gets x 1 y 1 let us call it Euler. So, we will write a e here and so on. So, you are missing this much. So, this is the error uh, in Euler's method. So, because you are um, drawing a tangent there or a slope there and then you are calculating uh, coming to the point x 1 and you are thinking that that is the solution and so on. And then again you draw a slope here okay, and come to a point x 2 again equidistant and you think that this point is your x 2 y 2 sorry. And again you are making a big mistake of leaving out this thing. So, this is again the error in the Euler's method. Okay. So, these are the errors and these errors as you see that these errors are growing and these errors would grow if you keep uh, you know doing this and this uh, function is a, a complicated function that is your final solution of the differential equation has a form like this uh, and uh, you know if it is steep uh, rises uh, as x increases then you will miss out more and more and things like that. Okay? So, these are graphically this is what it means and these are the things that you are missing out. Let me uh, draw it with a different color so that it becomes you know more. Uh, so, this thing is what you are missing out okay? and this is what you are missing out. All right? So, these are the error which are creeping in at every stage as you are doing it from an interval say some um, you know a to b here of course, we have taken a to b uh, that x 0 and things like that. So, let me uh, give an example. So, let us take an example of y prime equal to 3 x square plus 1. Uh, with uh, given as uh, uh, the initial condition is given as y at x equal to 1 is equal to 2. See the main uh, merit of this Euler's method is that you do not have to calculate higher order derivative, the first derivative is going to be fine. So, that way is a simpler method, but of course, you are seeing that it introduces large errors as we uh, go ahead with the uh, you know um, <coughs> the procedure. So, uh, the 
question is that estimate uh, y at 2 uh, using Euler's method um, for h equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So, you are given at, uh, at x equal to 1. So, you go from x equal to 1 to 1.5, 1.5 to 2. So, there are only 2 intervals that are to be used. So, it is just like this what is shown here. So, uh, we already know. Uh, so, the solution is that we already know that y at 1 equal to 2, y at 1.5 use the formula which is 2 that is the old value and then this uh, h which is the step size and then one has to calculate the um, value of the function uh, or the uh, this uh, derivative which is already given and you have to calculate it at 1. So, 3 into 1 square plus 1. So, this is like 4. Okay? And similarly, for the next one 2.0 1 gets a 4 plus again 0 0.5 is h. So, that is the uh, step size and uh, this uh, value is 3 into 1.5 square uh, plus 1. So, you see the since it is using the first derivative and first derivative is there in the uh, equation itself in the first order differential equation that you are solving, uh, then this becomes uh, 7.875. Okay? So, if you use um, if we use uh, h equal to 0.25 that is further reduce the interval from 5.5 to 0.25, uh, one gets y at 2.0 to be 8.906626. Uh, uh, 6, you should check this value and uh, uh, you would understand that just by uh, taking uh, the interval to be large which is 0 0.5 one gets a value which is 7.875 where it is almost it is equal to 9. So, that is a large error. So, let us uh, discuss on the um, accuracy of Euler's method. So, uh, as usual the accuracy is um, affected by two sources uh, of, um, <coughs> uh, of this error and the two sources are uh, the round of error and the truncation error. So, of course, the truncation error is uh, dominant because you are truncating the Taylor series after the first term. So, uh, so because you are doing that the error is introduced at the second step onwards which is a double derivative. So, uh, and uh, every time you are missing the double derivative onwards, so they kind of uh, you know add up as you go ahead with this uh, every interval from one interval to another. Like here, we have missed a double derivative at this interval at uh, 1.5 and uh, then again we have missed a double derivative from at the 2 uh, level 2 uh, that at x equal to 2 and then this has a cumulative effect. Okay? of uh, these uh, truncation and uh, let us just write these uh, truncation errors as these are well uh, local and local and global um, truncation errors. So, what I mean by local and global is the following. So, uh, the local one is at a given step the error that you pick up and global is uh, the cumulative effect of all that. So, uh, so for example, uh, the local error is caused by neglecting 
this term onwards uh, which is let us call it as uh, um, i and i plus 1 that is a truncation and this is y i double prime by 2 factorial h square plus y i triple prime by 3 factorial h cube and so on. Uh, so, this is the leading order let us take the leading order uh, at the leading order. Why leading order? Because h is small, h is supposed to be small. So, this is equal to i i plus 1 equal to y i double prime by 2 factorial h square. So, the global one uh, is the sum total of all of them. So, let us write E um, T G for the global which is equal to sum over C i h square i equal to 1 to n and this is like C 1 plus C 2 plus C 3 and so on all the way up to C n h square equal to n C h square. Uh, so, C equal to uh, like C 1 plus C 2 plus so on uh, divided by n. Uh, and n equal to uh, <coughs> the total sub intervals number of uh, sub intervals that one has used. And uh, so, this E uh, T G this is nothing but B minus A that is the total interval C into H where C is those coefficient. So, C is nothing but the uh, sum of the uh, all the second order derivatives um, computed at um, x equal to uh, x 0 which is a that is the left um, you know interval um, extremity of the interval uh, that is given to us. So, uh, let us see that. So, this is just the second derivatives, uh, sum of the second derivatives that is what your C is. So, let us see an example. It is giving uh, you know uh, simple examples. So, the step 1 is x 0. So, what you have to do is that uh, you have to let us um, compute the error estimates of y prime equal to 3 x square plus 1 for h equal to 0 0.5. So, that is the error that we calculate of the last problem. So, x 0 equal to 1, y 0 equal to 2 that is given uh, the same problem as earlier. So, y at uh, 1 equal to 2. Uh, so, y double prime equal to 6 x. So, y 1 equal to y into 1.5 which is equal to 4 as has already been calculated and y triple prime is equal to 6. So, E t 1 that is the first step is uh, y 0 double prime by 2 h square, I am taking also the third term uh, h cube. So, this is like 6 into 1 cal evaluated at x 0 which is equal to 1 by 2 into 0 0.5 square plus 6 by 6 into 0 0.5 whole cube and this is like nothing but 0 0.875. That is the error at the first step. So, this is uh, step uh, 1 and, uh, and E t 2 uh, rather let us write it at step 2. Uh, this is again uh, that uh, so now our uh, this thing is uh, x equal to 1.5 y 1 equal to 4 um, y 2 uh, equal to 
equal to y 2.0 equal to 7.875 and so on. So, this is equal to 6 into 1.5 by 2 0 0.5 square plus 6 by 6 uh, 0 0.5 cube. So, this is equal to 1.25. So, the, these are the local truncation errors at step 1 and step 2. So, the global truncation error Um, is um, it is equal to E t 1 plus a E t 2 and this is what is we call it as E t g. This is equal to just sum of both of them and that becomes equal to 2.125. Okay. So, if you are interested in the exact solution which can be done analytically, so, y of x equal to x cube plus x. So, y at uh, so true values y at 1.5 is 4.875. How much did you get? You got 4 okay, as opposed to 4.875 and y at 2.0 which is what you need you got it as 10 whereas uh, you got it as 7.875 and if you reduce the interval you got about 9, but the exact value is about 10. So, th these are the ones that are shown graphically by this red line. So, these are the values. So, this is like uh, a larger value which is uh, I mean 7.875 as opposed to 10 uh, is the real value that you have it here and whereas uh, you know you got a value which is much lower than that and similarly this was 4.875. So, anyway, so these are the uh, errors that are creeping in at every stage um, of your iteration of uh, every interval of your iteration and that is why it has limited applicability. But nevertheless, it is a very intuitive method just uses two terms of the um, Taylor series expansion and they you do not have to do anything analytically because the differential equation itself which is y prime equal to f uh, has uh, a value that is given. So, one has to need to really calculate uh, the value of the function and use it uh, uh, you know um, use the formula that your old uh, new value equal to old value plus the slope into the step size and keep iterating these solutions make the interval smaller and smaller and it is likely that your accuracy of the method or the solutions that you obtain would improve.